May I express my appreciation to the First Presidency in permitting me to say a word here this afternoon, and it will be just a word. Many things have been said about missionaries and missionary work, and that has been the first love of my life. And I have been reminded of several things that happened <clears throat> 68 years ago when I went to England. One I should like to relate. <clears throat> I had gone to a certain house several times and been rejected and warned not to come back again. But I was prompted to go again and again. And then the last visit that I was walk, attempting to walk past that house, I was prompted to go in and try again to make contact. I used the big brass knocker on the English door without any response. I could see the lady sitting in the front room knitting and I made considerable noise with that knocker. <clears throat> she did not come out and I went around the back door. <laughs> there was no knocker on that door, so I used my walking stick. And I knocked with considerable vigor. In fact, it echoed through all the house. Very soon the lady came out and her coming out reminded me of my early days on the farm when I would tease a setting hen off of the nest. <laughs> <laughs> I see some of you have had farm experience. <clears throat> and you know that a setting hen, when she's teased off the nest, comes out with the feathers going in the wrong direction, <clears throat> with her beak in perpetual motion. <laughs> and this woman reminded me of that. <clears throat> I apologized and said, I'm sorry to have interrupted you and have insisted on an interview. But my dear sister, I have come over 6,000 miles to bring you a message which the Lord wants you to have. He sent me here to give you that message. And I'm going back to Canada in a few days, and I must tell you what the Lord wants you to know. She said, you mean the Lord sent a message to me? I said, that's it right. He did. What is it? And I told her the restoration of the gospel, the organization of the church, and the message of the restoration. She was quite impressed by what I told her. And I told her when I left her, I'm sorry to have disturbed you, but I could not refuse to carry out the message and the mission that was given to me when I came here to bring to you. And when we meet again, and we will meet again, you are going to say thank you for coming to my back door. Thank you for loving me enough carry the message of the Lord to me. When you left, I could hardly contain myself. I was worried, disturbed, and wondered what it was all about. But I finally went to the mission home, got some literature, studied, and became a member of the church with my family. Ten years later, I was in England again, this time as a soldier. At the end of the meeting, a lady came up with two grown daughters. She says, I do thank God and thank you that you came to my door with that message many years ago. She says, my and my daughters joined the church and we're going to Utah in a short time. And we thank God that you had the courage, the fortitude, and the faith to come to me with that divine message and leave it with me in the name of the Lord. My brethren and sisters, I want to bear witness to you as to the divinity of this work. From the center of my heart, to the ends of my fingers and toes, I know this is the work of God. 
I know the gospel has been restored. I know that the men who are leading a church are inspired and directed by him who appointed them. I know that this gospel will roll forth until it fills the whole earth, and I'm looking forward to the time when all of us will be united on the other side and carry on the great work which we have so falteringly tried to do here on earth. I leave this testimony with you and my blessing. I pray God to bless all who are here and all who are listening. In fact, all men everywhere. Oh, Father, bless these people that they may catch the spirit of this work and devote themselves assiduously to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to all the world. I leave this testimony and this message, this prayer with you humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.